if you're shooting YouTube content, not if you're making commercials, not if you're shooting for a company that's paying you, but if you're just giving your opinion online or covering an event or making a tutorial of some kind, you might be leaving a lot of memory card space on the table just with your settings. Let me show you what I mean. I've got two Sony cameras here, a higher end A7S III, totally overkill for shooting at a desk, but your budget is your business, not mine, and a much cheaper, but still 4K, 100 megabytes per second, 99% of the world can't tell the difference, ZV-E10. Starting with the A7S III, because this camera has one additional category that it can shoot in that the ZV-E10 cannot. When you're setting up your camera and you go to the file format, that's where you're choosing between shooting 4K or 1080p, you're met with this long list of choices. This camera lets you shoot in a newer codec that can retain more detail while using less card space called HAVCHS, also known as H.265, where the ZV-E10 can only shoot in HAVCS, also known as H.264. And if you have an M1 or newer Mac computer that you're using to edit, you're in luck. They put a special chip in the Apple Silicon Max specifically to deal with the H.265 codec. So if you have an M1, M2, or M3 Mac computer, your choice is automatically to shoot in HAVCHS. You can still edit in full resolution 4K without using proxies and everything will be super smooth. Plus, in this setting, you get an equal or better picture quality for the same or smaller file size. If you have an older Intel Mac or Windows computer, these HAVCHS H.265 files will give your computer a much harder time editing at full resolution. Ugh, there's a lot of qualifiers in these sentences. But if you still want to save the card space, you can, you can edit with proxies. Maybe look up editing with proxies, or I'll make a video about that later. So that's your file format choice, and you only have this choice on the A7S III, or other Sony Alpha cameras, A7 IV, A7R4, A7R5, a1. On your ZV-E10, you only have HAVCS. So you're just going to be choosing between 4K and HD, which is 1080, when you're in the file format menu. But file format is only half of the story. Next, you have a choice of record settings. This is where you might initially think, well, more is always better. I want to retain as much information in my raw video as I can for editing. And sure, if you're shooting short films or you're shooting commercially, you'll want to give your editor the absolute highest quality bitrate thing that you can. But if you're making YouTube videos, I think you'll find that doubling your card space is more important than the tiny, tiny, practically imperceptible difference in quality you'll see by doubling your bitrate. In the record settings, this 100M, 50M, or 30M number on the A7S III, or the 100M versus 60M number on the ZV-E10 is your bitrate. So it's allowing a maximum of 100 megabits per second. Megabits, yeah? So it's allowing a maximum of 100 megabits per second. Well, you can choose between 100, 50, or down to 30 megabytes per second for the video. The numbers next to that, 422 is for color sampling. You can think of that as the color resolution, and then 10 bit is the color depth. You won't see the color sampling or the color bit depth choices on the ZV-E10 because it's automatically in 4208 bit. Basically, 8 bit color means that there's a maximum of 16 million colors that this thing can pick up, where 10 bit color allows for over a billion colors to be picked up. Spoiler alert, the human eye can only distinguish about 10 million colors, and a lot of monitors can only display 8 bit color also. But that said, 10 bit color is used professionally for more flexibility in the color grade when you're editing, and newer, nicer monitors monitors, including iPhone screens, have 10-bit color. So it's not like it's a waste to shoot in 10-bit color, especially professionally. But again, YouTube videos? If you're just making talking head YouTube videos, I don't know if it's that important whether you can distinguish millions or billions of shades between where the pink light ends and the blue light starts in the back of my monitor here. You know what I mean? So the main focus of this whole thing is that 60M or 100M choice, or if you're using a Sony Alpha camera, the 30, 60, or 100M choice. And I'm gonna switch out cameras for the ZV-E10 for this next part. This is 60 megabits per second, and this is 100 megabits per second. I'm, I'm recording, recording this whole paragraph twice. Even, Even if one produces a slightly clearer picture, picture for you, you Arguably, over 50, 50 megabits, you literally can't see a difference. difference. But even, even if you pause the video, video go frame by frame, by frame, frame at 400% and find that the wet reflection on my eyeball is ever so slightly sharper at 100 megabits, megabits per second. After you're done editing a video and you export it from Final Cut Pro or from Adobe Premiere or from Adobe Resolve, Resolve, that 100, 100 megabits, megabits per second stream is compressed down to like 40 megabits, megabits per second. second. And even then, after you upload it to YouTube, they don't just take the file you gave them and show it to people, they compress it into their own format. It gets compressed again. The point of saying all that is, by the time your video is up on the internet, by the time this video is up on the internet, it is at best gonna be shown at around 40 megabits per second if someone's watching it in 4K on a 4K screen. You will gain nothing by shooting at a higher bit rate and then uploading it to YouTube. This is not to mention the fact that almost everyone watching is probably watching at 1080p anyway, which is more like eight megabits per second. We'll do the same thing with my A7 IV. This is 30 megabits per second. 
this is 50 megabits, and this is 100 megabits per second. All three of these pictures are at 100% scale, just crop so that they fit side by side. Take a close look and tell me if you can honestly see such an improvement on the 100 megabits one that I should bother eating up three times as much memory card space shooting videos in my warehouse. So this was a very long way to say, pick that bottom number. On the ZV-E10, shoot at 60 megabits per second. This is a freshly formatted 64 gigabyte SD card. And look, the difference is between one hour and 16 minutes for 100 megabits per second versus an hour and 59 minutes for the 60 megabits per second. This same card gets four hours shooting on the A7S III in HAVC-HS at 30 megabits per second. That's a lot to say. You will between close to double and 4X your memory card space. And practically speaking, you won't lose any quality from the final product that people see on the internet. Thank you, goodbye.